Hi, I'm Ben Downs, the general manager of Candy 95 in Bryan College Station, Texas. I'm not sitting on the side of my desk to be hip and cool. I'm sitting here because my desk looks like hell and I really didn't want to take the time to clean it up today and then have to go back to work again. In College Station, we have a town with 46,000 college students and we have more radio stations than we have pizza huts in our town. But even so, no one was really targeting those college students with a particular format. Being an old guy, I know that in the early days of FM, when the first radios were coming out, every Everybody decided that the thing to do was to put classical music on the air because there were no classical music stations. It was a niche and so this was something that really needed to be filled. So we decided that alternative rock was going to be our version of the niche format classic music. 46,000 college students, 46,000 early adopters, HD radio, a whole new concept. It made perfectly good sense to us. So that's why Rock Candy was born. The first thing we decided to do was make sure that we had as much local as we could and to do things that other people couldn't have, uh, that they couldn't get from other, other formats and other stations in the market. So we decided that there would be a lot of indie music and a lot of local bands on our station. We have a couple of personalities on the air. We have Zach Patrick and we also have Emo Sarah. Emo Sarah just happens to be an employee at our station who loves independent music. So she was great for that particular role. She interviews bands, she has her own show, she does a, a, a music meeting show that, where she introduces new bands and new music to people. The HD3 is, a, is another, is an outlet that we're using for our own product. We generate a lot of original product, especially during sports seasons. We have basketball games, we have five high school teams in the area. The HD3 is called Play by Replay, which we thought was a very clever way of tying in sports and the fact that it's not necessarily live sports. And we also, when uh, it's an off-season, we run our morning shows and some of our other original programming, coaches' interviews and coaches' shows and things like that on that station. In order to try to encourage adoption, we wanted people to be able to hear the programming, obviously. So we went over to Best Buy and we bought everything they had on the shelves of the Insignia Tuner and we put those into places, uh, smaller, smaller corner bars and small restaurants and small places where we probably, we hoped we wouldn't be violating any of the ASCAP rules. We also did some other things. Since we were going to be an alternative station, we of course mouse pads, which is no good for people who have laptops, but there are a lot of people who still don't, and besides we thought this was too cool of an idea to let it go. Instead of putting an academic calendar for our college students, we have an unacademic calendar. It shows every holiday and every break that Texas A&M and Bling College and the local high schools take, all right here on the side. Monetizing something that no one has any idea about is a little bit more of a challenge. The best plan we thought was to sell a concept and to sell a shortage, if you will. So when we put the station on the air, the HD2, we limited it to two minutes of commercials an hour, period. And we sold people the idea that we were going to only have five sponsors on the whole station and that you have a chance to be one of them and your commercials will just run in rotation. Because it's indie and because we have local music on there, our local Budweiser distributor wanted to take part in it, and so we have a big-time sponsor in our local Budweiser people. We also do the same thing that everybody else does. We, once again, on the mouse pads, you saw that there was a little thing that said Gateway down there. That's the uh, Gateway apartment complex, and they, they, uh, they sponsor the mouse pads, and we charge them for that, of course. And the back of the bumper stickers are all also going to have a place for sponsorship. We all know how to start a new radio station. We know how many bumper stickers, how many TV ads, how many billboards we're supposed to buy, but this is different. Not only are we starting an entirely new radio station, we're starting an entirely new technology. When people find out about HD radio, they like it and they want it, but not a lot of people know about it. So we have to find a way to promote without cutting the legs out from under our existing products. It's a world of limited resources, so we're going to have to try to think outside of that thing that we're supposed to think outside of. I hope that next year you have a chance to be on this panel and to tell everybody the great ideas that you found, the creative ideas, the new thoughts, the new ways, the ways that don't uh, cost just a whole lot of money, because that's what we're dealing with right now. We have an entirely new technology that we have to unveil. We've been given two brand new radio stations that we get to promote and talk about. It's pretty exciting when you think of it on that level, but in this world of limited resources, we've got to be clever. Good luck.